Hello, this is Spartan Commander, and this is the 658th own Total War Brotherhood game that I've put onto YouTube. Straight away, you'll see this is fought on a custom map hosted by Brotherhood member Crypto, and this should be a great battle for you to watch. And there's a little bit of history about the Battle of Carhoy in this battle, which I hope you'll enjoy. Okay, our first teammate is Brotherhood member Crypto, the host of this game, and he has got 11 Spartans, 8 Cretan archers, and 1 fast moving cavalry general unit there the general armored bodyguard unit so with all that firepower eight cretan archers i mean that is a heck of a lot of firepower there and as i say he likes playing with his faction and he's very good with it um our next teammate is someone who called himself mark anthony but is in fact legion 22 and he has got just 10 infantry four archers and six cavalry okay 10 infantry four archers six cavalry okay for legion 22 you have a look on here you'll see it's eight upgrades two experience stripes gold shield gold attack so he's got some serious cavalry there um but only 10 infantry is that enough for the modern day battlefield okay well i guess we just have to see as the battle unfolds okay our next teammate is uh brotherhood member earth now earth has got 12 spartans six cretans archers and two fast moving missile cavalry units there okay quick look at those um, missile uh, cavalry units there these can be a real nuisance to slow moving infantry like roman troops and stuff like that they can cause a lot of casualties and they're so fast roman uh, cavalry won't be able to catch them there plus he's got uh, a lot of archer fire there once again a lot of firepower there with his archers and our last teammate is myself spartan commander who's got a very old morale based army of 13 infantry and 6 cavalry okay so there's our team unusual to have two greek city factions in our team there okay so the the enemy are going to have a massive cavalry advantage over us during the course of this battle which may prove pivotal towards the end of the battle Okay, at this stage of the battle, I thought we'd have a look at our two Greek cities allies battle formation here. If you notice here, it's Brotherhood member Earth. Can you see how he split his Spartans up into two separate armies there? And if you notice how they're all quite separated, there's no close tight formation like um, when I bring them. This is the new modern way of using Spartans, making the most of their flexibility. As I say, those of you that watch our battle videos regularly will know when I bring Greek cities, I still use the old fashioned close tight formation. But this is the new way of using Spartans and seems to be very effective. Let's have a look at Crypto here. Now look at Crypto. He's just got one continuous line of his Spartans there. Once again, looking to make the most of their flexibility and using them, in, as I say, in a new modern way, which proves to be, you know, quite effective there. So it'd be interesting to see how Earth and Crypto do during the course of the battle. And here is the other team. We have Brother member Clash. Now Clash has got 12 infantry, two archers and six cavalry okay if you look at the forward uh, units of his battle formation you'll see that those forward units have just got gold shield gold attack on those are the units that's going to make first contact with the enemy and take the pilers okay so that's what he's got there as you can see and he's got praetorian units at, uh, at the front of his battle formation there instead of urban cohorts plus there you'll see that the rear units of his battle formation have got seven upgrades on an experienced stripe gold shield gold attack and I believe his cavalry has just got gold shield, gold attack on, um, on the rear there of his uh, battle formation. So, interesting army build there. Should be interesting to see how well he does during the course of the battle. Okay, their next teammate is RTW player Serena. Now, Serena has got 12 pikes, 6 archers, and 2 cavalry. Okay, there was some confusion over the weekend about Serena. We're going to talk about Serena uh, uh, in a minute. And if you notice here that the pike units of Serena have got eight upgrades on, two experience stripes, gold shield, gold attack. So um, that makes those pikes extremely effective, I think, with those type of upgrades on. And as you can see, he's got seven upgrades on his cavalry and experience stripe, gold shield, gold attack. As I say, over the weekend, there was a bit of confusion uh, about Serena's name. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, to try and sort it out because to our modern ears Serena may well sound like a female name and I was asked if Serena was a female player which he is not but we'll talk about that in a minute okay um, their next teammate is Brotherhood member Man 2 Man 2 has got 11 pikes 3 archers and 6 chariots okay quick look at the upgrades on his pikes there and you will see that he has got fully upgraded 
a bronze shield pikeman there okay fully upgraded three experience strokes gold shield gold attack on his pontus pikeman look at the length of those pikes that our guys have got a fight down to get to kill the man on the other end so fully upgraded pontus pikes there that could be a, a real problem for us there and plus he's got his chariots now we've talked about this before these chariots can be battle winning troops they've got massive attack specifications they bring a massive fear factor taking morale away from enemy troops making them more susceptible to routing but if they run amok they kill both friend and foe alike and become a menace to both friend and foe alike and they of course when they run amok they go out of all control of their general and they just you know run into anything and they seem to be stronger in a muck mode killing more people uh, than they are in normal mode which seems a bit strange so they really are a double-edged sword you nearly you really need to think before you bring these guys because if they do run amok they can be an absolute menace to your allies okay uh their last teammate is brother remember Danny now Danny has got a big infantry army of 16 infantry and four cavalry okay so he's gone very heavy on the infantry there quick look at the upgrades on his cavalry and he's just got gold shield gold attack on his cavalry but 16 infantry that is a heck of a lot of infantry these days so there you go there's the enemy team um, you already got uh, clash with uh, SPQR, you've got Serena with Macedon, Mantu with Pontus, and Danny with SPQR. Should be a cracking battle for you to watch. Okay, at this stage of the battle, as I said, we would talk about the, uh, this name, Serena. Now, as I say, to our modern ear ears, Serena sounds like a female name, but actually Serena was a really great general in charge of the Parthian army at the Battle of Carhai. Now, um, several, you know, a lot of you might have heard of the Battle of Carhai, but aren't quite sure of the, the actual details of it. So I'll give you a brief rundown of the Battle of Carhai. Um, Crassus was the Roman general who uh, invaded Parthia looking for fame and fortune with approximately 40,000 Roman troops. Okay, um, as he moved on to the plains, uh, particular plains here by Carhai, they saw thousands of Parthian cavalry um, in the distance. Now, uh, Crassus uh, did the right thing. He put his Roman army into anti-cavalry formation with infantry in the middle and cavalry on the flanks. Okay, so that's a classic anti-cavalry Roman formation. But then all of a sudden he changed his mind and decided um, to put his uh, army into a hollow square. So tactically he made a really bad mistake there. Okay, so uh, Serena charged, uh, I think Serena had 9,000 horse archers and 1,000 heavily armoured cataphracts. Okay, so those 9,000 horse archers moved forward and started to shoot into the Roman formation. Meanwhile, he charged his cataphracts towards the front of the Roman battle formation. Now, he ordered his cataphracts to cover themselves in cloth so that the Roman soldiers couldn't see who they actually were and just before they smashed into the Roman forward units these cataphracts removed the cloth from their uh, their bodies so that the Romans could see they were heavily armored cataphracts um, it was kind of like um, a psychological game if you like there as he did that and then those cataphracts smashed into the forward units of those Roman uh, troops there while the 9,000 um, horse archers were shooting volumes in uh, volumes of arrows into the uh, Roman troops. Now the Roman troops formed up into Testudo, which we know is like an anti-missile formation. But the volume of arrows coming in on them were hitting them in the feet, the ankles, and the legs. Of course, disabling them. And there are reports that several uh, uh, Roman soldiers had their shields actually penetrated by um, Parthian arrows, and the and the arrows actually impaled their arm to the shield disabling them as well so um this was a massive massive amount of arrows coming on them nine thousand horse archers so but what the romans thought was well okay we'll put up with this because they're bound to run out of arrows eventually but serena had already anticipated this and bought up hundreds of camels laden with thousands and thousands of arrows so the horse archers could easily replenish their arrows and carry on shooting into the roman troops so anyway crassus could see the morale of his troops lowering and see the casualties he was suffering he sent out an infantry um, foray to try and um, chase the uh, the Parthians away or try and get them to fight and of course um, as the infantry moved out 
the Parthian um, archers moved away and they did what they call the Parthian shot. And that's where these Parthian horse archers could turn 180 degrees in the saddle and fire arrows uh, accurately at chasing enemy troops. So this infantry moved out further and further chasing these horse archers and then all of a sudden the horse archers turned on them and the cataphracts smashed into them and this Roman foray that had gone out to try and chase away the actual um, enemy archers were hit by thousands of horse archers and the cataphracts and in the end they were running back to the main battle formation there uh, for their lives losing most of the men that uh, had actually gone out there. Okay, well, Crassus got into such, um, you know, he was in such a state now that he actually got his son Publius to go out and actually attack the Parthian um, cavalry. And his son had something like 1,300 cavalry, 500 archers, and about 3,000 infantry. And as he moved out of the battle formation, of course, the Parthians just kept pulling back. And Publius, not being an experienced general, just kept following and thinking they were running away from him. And he was thinking, well, this is great. Look, they're running away from us. I'll keep chasing them. And the Parthians drew his force further and further away from the battle formation. Um, and then all of a sudden turned on him. And there was all of a sudden thousands of horse archers shooting into his troops, plus those dreaded cataphracts smashing into him. Um, in the end, um, Publius asked one of his officers, I believe, to kill him, which he did. And um, the uh, the force that he had retreated to a small hill at what was left of them and made a last stand there where most of them were killed and a few of them were captured. Well, Crassus didn't know what to do because all he could see in the, in the they were so far away was the dust. So he didn't know whether to move his army forward or not. But in the end, he didn't have to because all of a sudden a lone Parthian um, horseman ran forward with his son Publius's head on a spear and this lone horseman rode up and down the Roman ranks showing this head on the spear lowering the morale of Roman troops even more. With this Crassus couldn't um, make decisions anymore after his son had been killed and the officers had to take over. Um, at night fall, when night fell, the Parthians withdrew and the Roman um, officers decided they were going to move the whole army back to the town of Carhai. Um, unfortunately, of course, they've got thousands, two or three thousand, I believe, of wounded Roman soldiers where they were hitting the legs, the ankles and the feet who couldn't move. Obviously, they, you know, they just couldn't move. But these Roman officers decided to move out anyway and leave all the wounded. And of course, the next morning, um, the Parthians came back to the battlefield and slaughtered all the Roman wounded that were there. And then they chased after the uh, the Roman army as it moved back to, I believe, the town of Carhai. OK, I'm just going to say this is a very brief description of the Battle of Carhai. Um, but if you uh, if you get a chance, have a read up about it and you'll see what a great general Serena was. I mean, anticipating, um, you know, those... Uh, his horse, horse archers, his 9,000 horse archers, would be absolutely using thousands of arrows. And that's why he brought that um, column of camels up with tens of thousands of arrows on, so they could keep the bombardment up onto the Roman troops there. And imagine the morale of those Roman troops being shot in the feet, the ankles and the legs, and seeing the men falling all around them there. It must have been uh, terrible to be in that Roman army at the time. But just to say that Serena was a male general, a uh, really good general in charge of the Parthian army. So um, just to clear up that Serena is not a female name, it is a male name, and he was a great general of the Parthian army. As I say, um, if you haven't read up about the Battle of Carhai, you might find it really interesting. As I say, I've only give you a brief description, and uh, I hope you didn't find it too boring. Okay. Okay, at this very, very early stage of the battle here, and literally the battle has just started here. You'll see that down on our left flank, Crypto being very, very aggressive with his Greek cities. So whenever he brings Greek cities, he always is very aggressive here, taking his archers forward, hoping to inflict uh, archer damage onto enemy troops as they try and move up to, um, uh, you know, make the uh, group, re uh, meet the rest of the group there backed up by uh, Legion 22's cavalry that guard and his archers. Nice bit of teamwork there by uh, Legion 22. Uh, nice, as I say, guarding Crypto's archers there. So uh, well done to Legion 22. Now up here on the right flank, here you'll see, um, if you notice, know, this is a map that Crypto hosts on a lot. Now it's got a slope. Okay, the right side of the slope is the higher ground, and obviously the left is the lower part of the ground. So we always try and get up onto the higher part of the slope there. 
because that obviously any higher ground in Rome Total War gives you an advantage. So if you notice here, you'll see that I'm moving forward there with my Scipii army, and you'll notice that Earth is moving forward as well. And then what we find, the two of us, is when we're on the same flank together, um, it kind of um, makes us really aggressive players, um, even more aggressive than what we are normally here. And of course, um, grabbing the higher part of the slope here, as well as um, attacking the enemy troops from that higher part of the slope, is something that Earth and me do quite a lot. So as I say, whenever we're on the same flank together, it kind of, even though we don't might not say anything to each other, we automatically uh, move forward to try and um, capture the higher part of the slope here, so that it's a downhill battle against the. Uh, or a down slope battle against the uh, the enemy troops here. And as you can see, moving my skipper army over really aggressively here, and Earth's moving um, one half of his army over as well. Now, just to say, because there's two massive pike armies in this game, this can cause a bit of lag, okay, uh, with um, some of the players' computers. So you might notice there's a bit of lag in this battle. I hope it doesn't spoil it too much for you. But as I say, when you've got two massive pike armies, it does tend to uh, cause that. Okay, so there's a slope. You can see it's only a gentle slope, but uh, Earth and myself have got onto the higher part of that slope now um, to be able to fight down the slope, okay, which is what we both wanted to do. And um, as the enemy didn't uh, contest this higher part of the slope, they've kind of um, given us the, uh, the advantage there. As you can see, moving my Scipio army round even more, along with Earth's half of his army. They say he's got his other half of the army a little bit away there. Okay, just want to show you a good bit of teamwork here. I'm just going to pause the game for a second. Can you see that Serena has put a screen in um, Macedon Pike unit in front of Clash's army there, which of course would put off any cavalry charges there, because nobody wants to charge their cavalry into the long pikes of Macedon. So that's a nice, uh, nice move there by Serena. Nice teamwork move there to uh, to help clash there on their left flank on our right flank there. So nice bit of teamwork. But as I say, I think both Earth and myself would be quite happy being on the higher part of the slope here, and um, to ready to um, to attack. As I say, when we're actually um, ready there. Okay, and as I say, nice move there by Serena with that uh, pike unit in front of Clash's uh, infantry there. Always nice to see a good bit of teamwork. Can you see that Danny is moving his infantry up this way a little bit as well? So it'll be interesting to see what he's going to do. But over here, there's those chariots. You can see the chariots moving up here towards us. Remember those chariots there with a the big attacking specification and the massive fear factor taking morale away from enemy troops. They're moving up slowly there to our flank. Um, and it would be interesting to see if Earth and myself are going to attack here soon on this flank. As I say, there is a little bit of lag in this battle. and As I say, I hope it doesn't spoil it too much for you. But uh, when you've got two massive pike armies, it does tend to cause a bit of lag with some players' computers there. Okay, you can see both Earth and myself moving forward there, down towards them. Pause the game for a second here. So obviously, we, this is who we want to attack. It's Clash. But over here, I want to show you something. If you notice here, can you see, as I say, Crypto is always very aggressive with this Greek city's army, and he's moving forward there, okay? Um, but if you notice here, he's a bit away from his teammate, Legion 22, a bit of a gap between them. And to me, Crypto looks a little bit isolated. I don't know what you think. Now, you imagine if Pontus here and Macedon, as part of the team plan, decided to attack Crypto, okay? Now that could be pretty bad for our team if he does if they do that, because those massive long pikes of Macedon and Pontus, remember those Pontus pikemen are fully upgraded. They could actually um, do a lot of damage, I think, to Crypto's Greek city Spartans. Now, if you notice, can you see that both Pontus and Macedon are moving towards Crypto's Greek cities? Now, for me, Crypto needs to move his Spartans back. He's got no chance against those massive pike units coming towards him. He needs to move his Greek cities back a long way away from those pikes because if he engages them, plus you can see Danny bringing his SBQR Roman army down as well. So to me, Crypto needs to back off quick as fast as he can. Not stand and try and fight those long pikes because if he does that, he's got a good chance of being smashed by Macedon and Pontus. As I say, remember those Pontus pikemen fully upgraded, three experience stripes, gold shield, gold attack, plus those Macedonian pikemen closing in as well. 
Okay, so as I say, you can see Crypto trying to move away, but you've got the SBQ or army of Danny coming in on him with his 16 infantry. Now, part of the battle plan here, I think, of the enemy team was to clash here. He's going to move back to his allies, but he's going to be a blocking force for myself and um, half of Earth's Greek city's army there. I think that's what's going to do. I think Danny um, and Macedon and Pontus are going to attack our allies here, where Clash tries to hold Earth and myself up from us getting into the battle there. Okay, that's what I think the enemy battle plan is, as you can see. But if you can see their Crypto now, he's kind of making a stand there with his Spartans now. I don't know what you guys think. Is that a good tactical move there? Or do you think you'd have kept moving your Spartans back further and further away so not to take on these guys? Because, as I say, that's a massive lot of long piked pikemen there for his Greek cities to actually fight. Let's just pause the game for a second here. If we look at the edge here, if you just look at the short length of those Spartan spears, see how short those spears are in comparison to the massive length of those pikes of Pontus and Macedon. So those Spartans have got to try and fight all the way down the length of those pikes to kill the man on the other end, suffering casualties all the time. Okay, I mean, this is a massive you know double pike army there hitting his greek cities and it wouldn't surprise me if they routed him you can see earth here is bringing down his other half of his um spartan army there to try and help uh, crypto but it does look quite uh, quite dangerous there you can see here um danny there um, with his spq army helping as well and you can see that legion 22's moved his scipio army forward to try and um, neutralize danny if he can here but this is a major problem for us here and I can see our Spartan ally Crypto Spartans there being routed by these two massive pike armies um, pushing in on him there. As I say, I think if it had been me, I'd have just keep, kept moving my Spartans back out the way. I certainly wouldn't have tried to make a stand against those, um, those massive pike armies there. But as I say, it's all up to individual generals what they're going to do there. Right, let's pause the game for a second here. Okay, so you can see those... Um, Pontus and Macedonian pikemen pushing into Crypto's infantry there. Okay, you can see that both myself and half of Earth's army now are moving down to Clash. His army. If we can take out Clash's army, we could then get into the back of those engaged enemy troops. Okay, I think that's probably what Earth and myself are thinking there. Okay, but meanwhile you can see that those chariots of um, man to are coming up behind us there and if you notice here you'll see that um earth is moving his cretan archers forward probably with a view to shoot fire arrows into those um pontus uh, chariots there to make them rout okay that make them run amok so uh, but as i say the main thing for us here is to try and take out clash's army now clash has got some good upgrades on his infantry so this will be a kind of difficult thing for us to do i think here you see there's a bit of pilot exchanging going on but remember we are on this uh, higher part of the slope so that will give us a down slope advantage here in um, attacking um, Clash's army you can see us moving in there right let's pause the game for a second here okay so as we thought all of Crypto Spartans have now been routed including his general as we thought they would be the massive uh, weight of those Macedonian and Pontus Pikes, um, you know, just just overwhelmed the Spartans there. Okay, so this is bad news for us. Okay, so all of Crypto's Spartans are dead. You can see Earth moving the other half of his army in here, trying to um, attack the enemy troops. Here you can see um, Legion Twenty Two attacking Danny's SBQR troops with cavalry and infantry there. Okay, so, but things look pretty dire for us. We've lost Crypto's army, and I think that uh, that's turned it into a 3v4 now, and things not looking very good for our team at this time. Okay, so as I say here, I'm doing a bit of pilot exchanging with um, Clash's army, and you can see Earth bringing his Greek city's army forward here to try and help. If you notice over here, you'll see I'm charging my cavalry in here to try and help a Legion 22 against the enemy SBQR troops there. You see my cavalry charging in there. Bang! As they smash in there. Of course, I'm going for that SBQR general. 
if I could take him out then obviously that would take the morale away from those SBQR troops but I uh, didn't quite do it there so I'm going to pull my cavalry back probably lock and load and get ready to charge in again okay you'll see over here that those chariots have killed um, a lot of um, earth's um, archers there but you'll see that a couple of the ar <coughs> the chariots have run amok there okay so what I'm thinking is if some of those archers actually rally and they shoot more um, fire arrows into those remaining chariots then all those chariots could then run amok without doing any damage to our infantry at all so that would be good news for us if that happens here but here you can see um, Earth, half of his Spartans are going up against those two massive Macedon and Pontus Pike armies that are moving in on him that have just taken out all of um, Crypto's uh, Spartans there. Now here you can see um, Legion 22 there with his cavalry attacking the enemy SBQR cavalry here. And as I say here you can see my cavalry, I'm going to pull them out, lock and load them and charge them back in. I think you can see some SBQR cavalry moving towards Legion 22's cavalry there. But as I say, you can see me moving my um, Scipii cavalry back out the way there and getting ready to charge back in there to try and take out those um, SBQR units that are fighting Legion 22. Okay, as I say, look at the Macedonian and um, Pontus Pikes moving in on Earth's army. Right, here you can see my cavalry charging in there. Get ready for this. And bang! As I smash in there. Uh, routing some of those SBQR units. I was going for the general there, but I don't think I'm going to route the general. But I've routed a couple of other SBQR units there. So I'm pleased with that. So that's going to help uh, Legion 22 a bit there, hopefully. And it's like the SBQR general's just been taken out, which is um, which is good news for us there. But uh, as I say, you can see uh, Legion 22 bringing some of his Scipio army forward here to try and um, neutralize the... Uh, help neutralize those pikes here you can see legion 22's charging his cavalry into the rear of those units there now you might think well why would he do that well remember pontus and maston morale is not very good if he could have got a couple of those units to route he may well have got a mass route going there because i say the the long pikes of macedon and pontus there are taking a toll even on earth's Spartans there and as I say Legion 22 charges cavalry into the rear of those pipes to help hoping to get as I say a few of those units to start routing where he might have got a mass route going there but unfortunately um, his cavalry hasn't managed to do that but he may well pull them back to charge them in again hopefully this next time getting a mass route there um, going okay as I say you can see Legion 22 brings some of his Scipio army over to help Earth's uh, Greek cities there right okay all the chariots of man 2 now have been um, made to run amok okay and that's because earth's archers rallied and shot fire arrows into those um, chariots there and um, now they've all run amok so apart from killing a few of earth's archers there all those chariots now will be completely out of their general's control and as long as we avoid them they won't do any damage to us at all now this is a nice move for a clash here he's moved his um sbqr cavalry round behind my engaged infantry and has now smashed those cavalry into the rear of my engaged um cavalry and er, uh, sorry infantry and earth's infantry there get rid of bang as they smash in there look at the impact and penetration of that cavalry now what i would say to you i think as if my infantry was just gold shield gold attack pause the game for a second if my infantry was just gold shield gold attack i reckon a lot of my units would have routed there with that impact but remember this is an old army that is what i call morale based got a couple of eagle units in there most of my infantry's got an experience stripe on so that's why they didn't route okay so as i say old school old fashioned army but it still works well on the modern day battlefield with that massive cavalry coming in behind us with a down slope advantage as well there so it's a hammer and anvil attack look his infantry being the anvil and that cavalry certainly being a hammer into the back of our troops remember earth's got a couple of greek city units in there as well so what i'm going to do now i'm going to kind of counter attack here and smash into the rear of that sbqr infantry and bang as we smash into the rear of that as i say engage sbqr army there which is uh now you can see there it's a real scrap here between the sbqr army and my scipio army there, i'm going to pull my cavalry back i'm going to lock and load them and i'm going to charge them back in there 
and try and take out, if we can, Clash's army, which would free up all our troops to go over and help our allies. Right, there you are, you can see my cavalry locked and loaded, now charging in, and bang, as they smash in there. And now we've routed, after a fierce fight, all of Clash's army there, and that's going to free up all our troops now to go over to face those victorious enemy troops on the other flank there. The only unit that um, Earth has got left is his general. The rest of his Spartans have been taken out by those massive pike armies there. You can see Legion 22's got his infantry there trying to hold him up. He's once again charged into the rear with his cavalry. It looks like he's going to pull his cavalry back out again. It looks like he's going to charge in again there, I think. Oh my gosh, well that's Earth's general has just been killed there. As you can see, and actually it's a double whammy because um, if you notice there, you'll see that Legion 22's general has just been routed and Earth's general has just been killed there. Okay, so in one stroke there, we've lost two general morale bonuses. Okay, Earth and myself now are moving what's left of our armies over here to try and um, challenge these two massive pike armies that, um, that are ready there to take us on. As I say, you can see um, Legion 22 Scipio troops are trying to do the best they can against those long pike pikemen. Okay, right, here comes Legion 22's cavalry in wedge formation yet again for more penetration, more impact. And he's going to charge in straight into the rear of those pikes. Get ready for this. And bang as he smashes in there. But you might have noticed that some of the enemy pikemen turned to face that attack. And now you can see... A lot of his um, cavalry has been routed now. As I say, look, some of his units, some of the enemy units turned to face that cavalry charge there. And that's what he charged into, is those pikes there. So a lot of his cavalry has now been routed by those um, pikemen there. And at the same time, I think his infantry have been taken out as well. There you are, his Scipio infantry that were facing those pikes have now been taken out, and Earth is now closing in with his Spartans. Now what I'm going to do with my Romans, I don't want to face those pikes head on, what I want to do is get round the flank here and get in behind them if I can. Now if Earth can pin and hold those pike units, I could then get my infantry in behind there and charge into the rear of those enemy pikes. Okay, remember, um, RTW is all about tactics and strategy and working as a team. Okay, that's the only way you win team battles is, is working as a team. And as I say here, I'm going to try and move my Scipio army in behind those pikes. Now, if you notice here, you'll see that Earth has brought his Spartans back in a line there. Hopefully going to um, hold and pin those pikes while I get in behind. You can see here that um, Legion 22 has got a couple of rallied... Scipio our units are charging in but I just wanted to show you this look at this line of red cloak Spartans there that's where Crypto's army was taken out by those two massive pike armies there I just thought that's interesting to see a line of red cloak Spartan dead there just showing how much those uh, pikes did damage to them there okay over here you'll see that um, man two's moving his Pontus pikeman forward there to engage the Spartans as you can see moving in there very aggressively and as I say I want to move my Scipio army in behind those pikes I don't want to play their game and take them on head on I want to get in behind them and as I say Earth is going to pin and hold Macedon and Pontus there while I get my units in behind them that's the battle plan here okay now a lot of those pike units are tired or very tired I'm guessing there. As I say here you can see the difference in the length of those Pontus pikes there in comparison to the short spears of those Spartans. So those Spartans have got to try and fight all the way down those pikes to kill the man on the other end suffering casualties all the time. You can see the Macedonian general moving in there as well. Okay, let's pause the game for a second here. So as I say, you can see here, if you look, can you see winded? Okay, then tired, very tired, very tired. So they're one off of exhausted. That means their morale is extremely low. Their battle proficiency is extremely low as well. And with the Spartans closing in on them there, um, I think that if we could just hit them in the rear, it may well cause a mass rout. Because if you notice here, most of Earth's units are fresh. Most of his Spartans are either just winded, which is fine to fight, or fresh. Okay, so I need to get my units in behind these Macedonian and Pike, um, Pontus pikemen there. And charge into the rear. If we can get a couple of their units to rout, 
I think that we could get a mass route going here. Okay, can you see my um, Scipio troops charging in there now? Can you see a few of the units are starting to rout? And as I say, this could turn into a mass route here. As we know, Pontus and Maston morale is not very good. Nice charge in there by Legion, look. And between us, look, we've now got a mass route of those Pontus and Macedonian pikemen there. And there's the Macedonian general, Macedonian general just gone there. So that was a mass route, as you could see, because most of the units were tired or very tired there. Uh, like, it was kind of like a hammer and anvil attack there with Earth's um, Spartans being the anvil and uh, Legion 22 Scipio troops and my Scipio troops being the hammer there. Quite a spread out battlefield here. This is where Earth's half of her Earth's army and my um, Scipio army took on um, Clash's army there. There's lots of dead there in a very, very um, tight um, position on the battlefield there. As we move across the battlefield here, as I say, you can see more dead. And then, of course, over to this part of the battlefield, as we looked at earlier with that line of red cloak Spartans there, trying to hold against those massive pike units there. And they were just overwhelmed by the numbers there, I think. The Spartans were, and as you move up the battlefield, you can see more Spartan dead. I think that's where Earth's army was, uh, half of his army was taken out there. So uh, we managed, I think, to turn this battle around after Crypto got his army taken out, and it was a, a 3v4 there. I think that um, we managed to to turn things around there, and uh, I hope you uh, you found it quite uh, quite an interesting battle there. I say I think the uh, the enemy now will admit defeat. And as I say, our team managed to um, <clears throat> to go on to uh, to win the battle there. Okay, the first thing I'd like to say is a really well played to everybody in the game. I thought everybody played well there. Really well played, guys. And just to say, it was a close victory, as we thought it might be. Highest kills in the game goes to Brotherhood member uh, Earth there. 2,003 kills. I think even on the modern day battlefield, getting 2,000 kills is still special. So well done to Earth there, getting 2,000 kills. Uh, did well. Uh, well done to Clash. Possibly didn't get the kills that he wanted to there, but he held us up really well. A good team player there. Really blocked us for a long time. So well done to Clash there. And stay holding us up really well as part of the team battle plan. Well done to Serena. Highest kills in his team there. With Macedon nearly 1,600 kills. So well done to Serena. Did really well there. Uh, well done to Man 2, possibly didn't get the kills that he wanted to there, but working hand in hand with Macedon did extremely well. I thought that was a good combination. And well done to Danny, possibly didn't get the kills that he wanted to do there with 16 infantry and 4 cavalry, but he played well. So really well played, guys. Um, Legion 22 or Mark Anthony got some really good kills, 1,430. So well done to him. Um, that old army of mine, mm, not too bad. Not brilliant kills, but not too bad, I suppose. And well done to Crypto there. I was surprised he got that many kills, um, bearing in mind he got hit by all those um, pike units there. But I guess a lot of those kills will be his Cretan archers that were still shooting into him. And as I say, well done to Earth, um, getting the highest kills in the game. Hope you enjoyed the history about Car High. Hope it wasn't too boring. Look forward to seeing you soon. Bye for now.